Hi, I'm Nazmul Hassan. This is going to be the second tutorial on SMA connector design in HFSS. If you recall, in our previous tutorial, we designed a complete electromagnetic model of an SMA connector in HFSS, but we didn't verify whether our connector was working or not. In this tutorial, you're going to learn to verify your SMA connector. So let's see how we can do that. You are an engineer, right? Once you design a device, obvious question will rise into your mind that your device is working or not. So same thing happens when you design an SMA connector in HFSS. Before applying this connector to your antenna or other microwave device, you definitely need to ensure that your designed connector is working or not. So what you do, you simply build a test bench to verify your connector in HFSS. So this principle applies to uh, any any software, whether you are using CST or HFSS, uh, doesn't matter at all. So what you do, you put two connectors on two sides of a PCB substrate, and then you connect these two connectors by a transmission line. Uh, it could be a strip line, micro strip line, couplana waveguide doesn't matter at all as long as it's a transmission line. Since we're using a PCB, so we prefer to use a microstrip transmission line in this case. This is much simpler and to avoid any complication, all right? So after doing that, you are going to excite both ports and then you are going to check this parameter. The purpose of exciting uh, these two ports is to verify that your signal is traveling from one side to another side. That means you're injecting the signal uh, in port 1 uh, in the connector 1 side and then you're going to check whether this signal arrives in the second connector side. That means you're going to check S21 because S21 is the transmission coefficient. Apart from checking S21, you are also going to check S11, which is the reflection coefficient. And the purpose of checking reflection coefficient is to check whether your signal that you are injecting at port 1 is not getting reflected back to your source. And that is why you are going to check two parameters in this case, S11 and then S21. All right? Okay. If you did not see my first tutorial where I showed how to design a complete SMA connector, then there is a tutorial in my YouTube channel uh, in HFSS tutorial playlist. Uh, you can check it out because uh, you definitely need a SMA connector model in HFSS before building this test bench. All right. So if you missed that tutorial, go and watch it. So this is the SMA connector model that we created in our previous tutorial. And first select this coordinate system to make sure that the CS is located right on that point. And then select all the components and right click. And let's name it. So we are making a 3D component out of this project. Okay, let's save it in an appropriate place. So we have made this SMA connector as a 3D component and we can reuse it in our new HFSS project file. Let's rename this new project file. Now let's load that 3D SMA connector. Okay. So. Okay. Now let's create a substrate. Let's name it substrate. 
and we're going to use Teconic RF30 yeah this one let's change the color as well okay now let's define the dimension of the substrate um, this is the x-axis so along the x-axis we're going to define the width which is 20 millimeter negative okay and along the y-axis we're going to define the length so x size is the sub x the length sorry the width and y size is the length which is 30 millimeter and z-axis along the z-axis we're going to define the thickness of the substrate sh sub h 1.5 millimeter okay there okay so now let's make the ground plane let's name it ground okay now let's change the boundary as perfect E okay this is the ground looks great now let's make the microstrip transmission line microstrip let's change the color as well Now let's define the dimensions. So along the X, we define the width of the microstrip and along the Y axis, we're going to define the length, okay? But um, we will use a separate variable G. I'm going to explain later why, just bear with me. So the width of the microstrip is 1.8 millimeter and uh, G is very small variable, 0.2 millimeter. So along the X axis, the width, and along the Y axis, it's the length, which is sub Y minus two multiplied by G. Okay. So, uh, G is basically denoting a gap variable. We are maintaining a small gap between the microstrip and the metallic body of the semiconductor to avoid any short circuit. That's why we have used that G variable. Okay. Now, uh, let's transform the coordinate system right at that point. And let's realign it. Sub Y. Okay, looks great. Now let's again load that semiconductor and make sure your target coordinate system is this one. Okay, and we're going to rotate it. Uh, minus 180 along the z-axis there you go perfect so we have all the components substrate microstrip ground plane and the two sma connectors now we have to define um okay now i'm just checking whether we have that gap between the metallic body and the microstrip looking fine now let's uh, define the boundary of the microstrip, which is a perfect E. I'm again uh, aligning the coordinate system and bringing it in the middle. 
and because I'm going to use this coordinate system for the radiation box so it should be sub y by 2 okay now let's create a vacuum box so this would be our radiation box let's change the transparency okay now let's define the dimension of the radiation box so along x-axis we we can just use 15 and along the y 21.5 I'm just using a random minimum size of the radiation boundary because it's not a radiating structure. It's uh, so there is no, I mean, very trivial influence on the size of the radiation boundary. All right. So everything is looking fine, but we have to define the radiation boundary. sign radiation there so this is our ground microstrip and then the radiation box this is our first port second port now let's add an analysis solution frequency for example 5 okay and let's add a frequency sweep Make sure you have a step size 0.1 gigahertz and a discrete sweep time. Okay, great. Now check and yeah, everything looks good. Let us simulate it. So it's prompting to save it first. Let's save it. Now the simulation is going and I will come back once it is done. Okay, so the simulation is done. Now let's check the results. Now go to results menu and then rectangular plot. These are these parameters. We're going to plot S11 and S21 in dB scale. So the red curve is this 11 plot and imagine the curve is S21. So S21 is around minus 2 to 3 dB, which is very good. So the signal is uh, transmitted forward, and S11 is um, below minus 10 dB, which is also good. Okay, so at some points, although S11 is greater than minus 10 dB, but that's quite normal because um, if you see um, in industry, it's acceptable. It's not a disaster as, at all. So that means your SMA is working fine. So I have, I have uh, shown how to verify your connector that you design in HFSS and how you can create a very simple test bench. This principle and this same test bench can be applied to any type of connector, whether it's a V connector, a K connector, or a SMA connector, you just name it. All right. Thank you very much for watching this tutorial.